Hi, this is Manuel, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November. Welcome back to my channel. This is part two about the NFET half-wave antenna and the transformers. I'm back with some surprising results. Results that were so unexpected that they surprised me myself. This video is going to be a little bit different this time because I didn't film all along with my, with my experiments. So we are most of the time looking at pictures or video snippets of my experiments and I'm going to walk you through my experiments and the results. Stay tuned. So let's talk a little bit about the transformers and what I did here. Uh, those are the different types of core materials. Um, let's start with those here. Those are FT37-43. This is FT50-43. This is FT82-43. This is FT114-43. This is FT140-43. And this is FT240-43. So, um, let's see. All transformers have been wound with three in 21 turns. What you might be able to see here is that I put a capacitor, a NP0 SMT capacitor in here. Here are through hole capacitors. Yeah, here you can see it. I'm going to zoom in for you. Here you can see it. That's an SMT capacitor. I tested that um, and it worked quite as well uh, as everyone else. So I built two transformers each and I did my first test, you did see that, you saw that in the first video, was uh, to connect them to a load and determine the SWR of the transformer. So to be able to see if it will work in the uh, environment, we are going to use them uh, with uh, artificial load attached here. So will it work with an antenna attached? Will it provide decent SWR? That was one test, and after that I wound another one, tested that the same way. <clears throat> then, in my second test, I soldered them back to back. Um, so 50 ohm, 2450 ohm, 2450 ohm, 50 ohm, and measured the insertion loss. So I send a signal in here, I measure what comes here, and I see how many losses are involved. Not only that, uh, I did not do that only with nano VNA, uh, which is very low power. I did the same thing with five watts in here and measuring what's coming out here. So I have comparison um, how the core behaves uh, when power is being uh, applied. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to transmit into my SWR meter with the dummy load in the back. This is before, and here I will insert the UNUNS, the broadband transformers, back to back. So we will see what they swallow. While doing that, um, inserting what we see here is a thermal video. Uh, I inserted 5 watts here, and on this side is my power meter attached with, uh, to a dummy load. And I transmitted into that, and as you can see, the core heated up. Those are the two FT37-43 toroids, and this was quite impressive, so I'm going to show that to you. Um, by the way, those videos would be with audio, but the quality is uh, very bad, so I'm talking over it. You can see here the core temperature has already reached 48 degrees. I'm doing, for comparison, uh, every, every course I compared with one minute constant key down in CW. And after that, I measured the temperature difference or wrote down the temperature difference uh, from the beginning to the end and what output power came in and compared that to the input power I had. So I could calculate or compare the decibels uh, and uh, compare that to the nano VNA measurement. As you see here, 72 degrees Celsius, 73 degrees Celsius, <laughs> 75 degrees so they heat up really extreme and just to mention that 
78 degrees Celsius now. Um, and just to mention that, while they were heating up, they indeed changed the output power. And the 37 cores were the only ones where I could observe that. So and this was the other measurement done by Nano VNA. Uh, they were connected uh, as 11 port, as 21 port of the Nano VNA. And then I made the plot. Those were the two FT37-43s and I measured the insertion loss. Now, if you look at that, you can see that's already quite a little bit of attenuation. Uh, nothing to be ignored. It's actually pretty high insertion loss. So we're going to talk about that. That's just an exemplary of uh, the measurements I've documented and done. And instead of boring you with all the pictures, I try to sum it up in um, an Excel sheet. So this is my Excel sheet. Please uh, excuse that. I'm not the guy that does fancy flip charts and stuff. I just try to uh, put all the, the measurements together in one sheet to get an overview of what's done. So let's go through this. All the measurements have been done with three turns primary and 21 turns secondary. My first uh, table is SWR measurement with 2450 uh, ohms termination of the secondary side, the same measurement we have been performing in uh, the first video of the NFET half-wave antenna series. So let's go through that. We can see that on 80 meters SWR is 1.61 for the uh, seven, uh, 37 um, core and yeah it's decent on 40 meters quite okay uh, on 20 meters but unusable on 10 meters and the 50 core has kind of the same behavior the 82 core is a little bit different uh, we have bad swr in the 80 meter section and it's quite decent over the rest of the short wave uh, 114 core was a little bit of an uh, exception it was decent all over the bands. And when I repeated that with 140-42, you could see a problem starts on 10 meters. And since all those measurements here are with three turns primary and 21 turns secondary, I didn't put my two turns primary and 14 turns secondary in here. With the 114, uh, sorry, 140 core, if you use two and 14, it works all over the band. What this tells us is, this is actually riding on a, on a knife's edge. Um, we are trying to create a broadband transformer and that's not successful every time and you need to vary your winding pattern. Okay, so the next measurement was two identical transformers back to back. And I just measured the insertion loss that I just shown you in the picture over the bands for the different core materials. And since the FT140-42 already showed bad SWR on 10 meters, I didn't include that. Uh, at least not for the three turns primary, 21 turns secondary, keep that in mind. Okay, then I uh, calculated that divided by two. This means the loss in decibels for a single core. And just assuming five watts in, I calculated uh, the power out that we should have using that decibels. You can calculate that. And the next column is the result of that. I tried to calculate the lost power in percent. So if you look at the FT37-43, you see that we already lose 30% of the power in the core. 40 it's 25, 20 it's 22, and 10 meter it's 20%. Now, if we look through the, the whole column, you can see it's always a compromise. Uh, we have a little bit more on the lower bands, a little bit less on the higher bands, and that seems to be kind of the middle ground. However, you see on all bands through all cores, at any case, you lose between 15 and 30% in the, 
in this transformer. And this is the surprising news here. It will swallow regardless. And that, by the way, is just the nano DNA measurement. That's not taking into account uh, that we might have some some core heating up effects. Yeah. So this is just caused by magnetic flux uh, in that transformer. So the next measurement was done. I, I showed you that as well. Was done for the um, comparison. I used two back to back. That's the video you saw, the thermal video. Sent in 4.89 watts. Um, I could read 2.55 at the end of this period of one minute. I had a delta of 40, uh, sorry, 54 degrees Celsius. That's <laughs> what a one minute of key down heated up that core. So I calculated the decibels. This is just input. Um, so I calculated stuff. Then I divided that by two. So I saw what was lost in the core. Then I compared that to the nano VNA measurement. And you can see here that the FT37-43 showed a deviation uh, of additional 0.67 decibels. And this was caused by heating up core. Uh, but probably not to saturation, but due to uh, mu i change uh, while heating up. If you look at the data sheet of such a such a toroid, you can see the uh, permeability. I hope it's it's spelled like this. Uh, the mu i is changing over temperature. So when the core heated up, it changed the behavior of the coil. And this is the additional 0.67 decibels. If you compare that to the other two measurements, they are plus minus 0.03 within the nano VNA measurements. So we can assume the nano VNA measurements are accurate and the, the power has no influence on it. And you can see, if you look up here, the 50s were heated up 20 degrees Celsius and the 82s already five only. And I repeated that later for the 114s, they only heated up one degree Celsius. So, what do we learn from this? First of all, a broadband transformer is always a compromise. You need to match your winding pattern to the core size you're using. That's one thing. So the 3 and 21 pattern seems to be optimum around that 82 and 114 cores. Those two transformers perform best with that winding pattern. What we further learned, don't use the 37 cores in a QOP application because they will heat up too much. Um, those 50 cores can be used, but they also already heat up 20 degrees. So I assume if you are trying to do whisper with that, they will also get in a range where they get heated up uh, so much um, that they will change their mu, mu y over um, time. So those two cores are probably the best for our QRP application right now. What else can we learn from this? Even in our optimum case where we figured out that 82 and 114 uh, core material is best for our 3 and 21 turn transformer, we still lose 20% plus minus 5% of power in that transformer. What can we determine from this? What can we derive from this? Uh, actually nothing except for the fact that we are losing energy in that core. We need to know that. I was assuming in my first video that it was around about uh, 0.5 watts. Boy, was I wrong. It was actually 1 to 2 watts if you look at uh, the number for the FT37 core. So compare that to antenna systems like uh, random wire and a tuner or any time, virtually any time when a tuner is involved, you're probably losing more because the tuner is nothing else but a, a big inductance coupled with a, a, a few uh, capacitors and trying to do the same thing, matching impedance. You're losing probably more energy in that uh, compared to our NFET half-wave broadband transformer. 
I assume if you compare that to a dipole, a dipole would have uh, way less um, lost power in the one in one uh, balloon uh, because the balloon actually doesn't uh, swallow energy but you have to keep in mind that our end fed half wave is actually uh, an antenna that you can use multiband you can you can uh, resonate that on any uh, harmonic uh, if you build that for 40 meters it will work on 20 and 10 as well while a dipole can only used on one band so let's wrap this up Boy, this was quite some work to do. It took me a while to wind all those transformers to collect the data. And the fun thing about that is you always realize you've not done enough. You've done not enough. So it would be actually take me further five to 10 videos to try to get somewhere near to the bottom of all of this. But I think we found out enough so we can build the NFET half wave. So in the next part, um, I'm going to show you how I'm doing the measurement of the, the legs, how I'm going to actually build the NFET half wave. And we are going to try that. And I think we are doing a part four where I show you different ways how to set that up. So what I also wanted to mention is uh, I wanted to say thanks to Delta Golf 1, Juliet Alpha November, who sent me samples of his PCB he designed. I'm going to put you a link to his GitHub in the description below. Uh, he actually came up with a PCB, open source PCB, that you can make yourself, which uh, makes it very easy and possible to build some antennas around that, including NFET half wave dipole, whatever you need. It's just uh, it, it combines the mechanical necessities and the electrical necessities. So I wanted to mention th uh, that and say thanks to Jan, much appreciated. And if you see that, please contact me by email because your email is invalid. So if you like my content, please like, uh, share and subscribe to my channel and see you next time. 73, good luck, bye bye.